So rise and shine, campers, and don't forget your booties because it's cold out there today. So can anybody tell me what movie that's the line from? That's Groundhog Day with Bill Murray and Andy McDowell in 1993, and it feels like we're right there. So, so cold that we didn't want to run the risk of doing, inviting anybody to come to church this morning, not even to the praise and worship team to do the live stream. So we're just doing it old school, back to recording in my living room, and we're going to post it online. So if you're watching this, that means you've figured that all out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a few announcements. We've got... Uh, I know that Ruth Gilchrist is feeling better, and Susie's finally starting to feel better, so that's good news. And uh, there's a rumor going around that next Saturday, this coming Saturday, ladies' meeting is going to be at ch church at 9.30, and... Uh, there's going to be sharing and fellowship, and I think Carlene said she was going to talk a little bit about the new Bible study on heaven that uh, she and Karen have been putting together. So that's all cool. And I'm just trying to think if there are any other needs or updates I can share with you. I know Elaine Floyd is just about finished with her. Well, she's not just about finished. She's in the middle of her physical therapy. Um, so keep praying for her. She gets stronger and she gets better every day. Let me think if there's anything else. I'm sure there is. And if Diana was here, she would tell me what it is. Uh, but if I'm missing anything, we can just send it out to you in an email. Uh, we're not really going to try to do a full worship service here. I just want to put something out there to encourage you today while you're staying safe and warm at home. Um, and so I just want to share with you a word from a, a psalm that I've been meditating and, and thinking about a lot lately. It's one of my favorite psalms. And uh, I don't know if you hear a lot of sermons drawn from this psalm, but it's just got a powerful promise that I think makes sense to us today. And it comes from uh, Psalm 56. Let me just read it to you. Psalm 56. This is a psalm of David. And he says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man has trampled upon me. Fighting all day long, he oppresses me. My foes have trampled on me all day long. For there are many who fight proudly against me. When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I have put my trust, and I shall not be afraid. Because what can mere man do to me? All day long they distort my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They attack, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited to take my life. Because of wickedness cast them forth. And anger put them down, put the peoples down, O God. You have taken account of my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back on the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I have put my trust, and I shall not be afraid. What can mere man do to me? Your vows are binding upon me, O God. I will render thank offerings to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Indeed, my feet from stumbling so that I may walk before God 
in the light of the living. Isn't that a wonderful song? Isn't that a wonderful set of promises? Here's some quick background, which makes it even more interesting. Um, most Bibles include the notes that were uh, in part of the manuscripts for these psalms, and Psalm 56 says, it's more complicated than this, but it basically says, a psalm of David that he wrote when he was captured by the Philistines in Gath. And this is a weird situation because David, who did nothing but love and honor and serve King Saul, uh, has finally, in fear of his life, to the degree that he's running away from Saul and his army and has decided to go and hide out with the Philistines. You remember the Philistines that were the uh, Israelites' sworn enemies? The Philistines whose hero, Goliath, uh, was killed by David. David uh, cut him, he hit him in the, the eye with uh, stones from a slingshot and then chopped off his head with his own sword. That Those Philistines, David is so desperate that he runs to hide with the Philistines. And of course the Philistines... Uh, are not his best friends and they don't want to be fresh, best friends and so they uh, this is a very uncom uncomfortable situation as David is basically surrendered to, captured by the Philistines uh, and he, he fakes being insane to try to get them to not be, feel threatened by him um, but anyhow um, the point is that when you consider this psalm in that context, and you look at what David is saying, he's saying, Be gracious to me, O God, for man has trampled upon me. Fighting all day long, he oppresses me, and my foes have trampled on me all day long, and they're spying on me, and they're watching my steps, and they are waiting to take my life. Who is David talking about here? He's talking about King Saul. He's not really talking about the Philistines or any of the other Am Amalekites or the Jebusites or the Parasites or the, ter or the Termites or any of those kind of... Uh, he's talking about King Saul, somebody that he had devoted his life to serving, somebody that he loved, somebody that he was willing to die for and defend with his life. It's this King Saul and his cohorts that are trying to kill David. So, somebody that he loved is putting his life at risk. And, you know, I'm not saying that we've ever had a situation quite this serious, but there's some times in our lives where the people that you trust and love the most sometimes just end up not only disappointing you, but betraying you and turning against you and working against you. And... If you've ever had an experience like that, then you know what horrible pain and sadness goes along with that. Somebody that's a straight-up enemy, clear-cut enemy, that you've never liked and you've never trusted, and um, you know, absolutely are on opposite sides, uh, good versus evil kind of thing. That's that's difficult, but it's not the kind of situation that breaks your heart. But when somebody that you love has betrayed you and turned into an enemy and is seems to be working against you, that's a special kind of pain and disappointment and frustration and that's kind of what David has been dealing with here. And then he makes this wonderful declaration, when I'm afraid I put my trust in you and God whose word I praise and in God, I have put my trust, and I'm not going to be afraid, because what can mere man do to me? With God is on my side, what kind of threat does anybody really pose to me to steal my safety and my security and my help and my hope, because my help and my hope is in the Lord? David was not running from Saul because he was afraid Saul was going to kill him. David was running from Saul to postpone a battle in which he might be forced to kill Saul, and he refused to do it. So he was willing to go to the Philistines in order to avoid fighting that fight. Lord, I'm trusting you. 
Lord, I know your word is faithful. And then we get this in verse 9, verse 8 and 9. Lord, you've taken account of my wanderings. And wanderings here is connected to the pain, the misery, the frustration, the anxiety of wandering. Not just going from here to there, but going from here to there in the kind of confused, frustrated, difficult, emotional, as well as physical struggle. Um, do you know what that's like? We all know what it's like when we don't know what to do and we just find ourselves going around in circles. Um, looking for an answer, not really having an answer, feeling a lot of heaviness, sadness in our hearts. Lord, you have taken account of my wanderings. You know what I've been struggling with. And God does. God knows what you have been struggling with today. I don't, um, but God does. God has taken into account the misery and the pain and the disappointment and the confusion that you may have been going through either this week or recently or, or maybe you feel like at this point it's just been going on way too long. David says, Lord, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not already written down in your book? It's just David's way of saying, Lord, I know. I know that you know. A few years ago, I was just having a devotional one day. I was praying. I don't even know what I was, I was talking to Jesus about. I was mostly just trying to listen to the voice of the Lord. And I heard his voice so clearly say to me as I was sort of coming to the end of my prayer and meditation time, he said, I know, I understand, I am working, I am working, and you are loved. Let me say that again. Those are God's words for me at that moment, and they are also God's words for you right now. I know. I understand. I am working. You are loved. Lord, take account of my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? God is, loves you so much. He's keeping your tears in his bottle, and he's written your life story down in his book. He knows what you're going through, and he'll never leave you or forsake you. God is good, how often? All the time. And no matter what things look like, no matter how thick the ice is on the roads, no matter how big the mountain you have to climb, God is always faithful. This I know, God is for me. David knew it then. He affirmed it then. This is 800 BC. It's still true today. God is for me. He is for you. He is for us. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Is there anything that flesh and blood can do that will ever separate you from the love of God? Is there anything that flesh and blood can do that will permanently and utterly disrupt your relationship with God and your connection to his love and his peace and his power and the power of the Holy Spirit? Of course not. David could say it's just people. They're just acting like people. But they don't have any power over me because I have placed my trust in God. He says, God, I'm going to keep my promises to you. I'm going to give me the, the thank offerings that I promised you because, God, you have delivered my soul from death. And indeed, you have delivered my feet from stumbling so that I may walk before you in the light of the living. One more awesome promise then is, you don't have to wait to get to heaven. 
in order to receive love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You don't have to wait to get to heaven before everything is worth living. God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm holding on to your hand right now so that we can walk together. Even on the times when you do stumble, it won't be fatal because I've got you. I'm holding on to you. We are going to get through this together and, and we will be more than conquerors. So that's God's word for you today. It's this word for me. So I'm just sharing it with you. That's God's promise. And I'm so, just so grateful that even when we feel weak and lost and helpless and hopeless, God is great. He never fails. And his promises, the promises of his word, are always true. They're always yes and amen. So we're just going to close with a little song. A song that some of you know really well. It's an old hymn. I've got some good friends who are powerful in the Lord, but they didn't come into the Lord. They didn't come into the kingdom until uh, they were adults. They weren't raised in church. They don't know any hymns. So this is one that I'm looking forward to teaching you. And Peggy's going to come and she's going to. Um, do you want to sit in a chair? You want to get a chair and sit in? <laughs>
in the middle of the ice storm and the snowstorm and whatever other storm we face this week. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay warm. We'll see you next week. God bless you. <laughs>